for my next painting, I'm looking at my sunset here. And I'm going to go ahead and again work from light to dark. So I'm going to begin with this bright shining sun for the sunset. I'm going to kind of work my way out from there. I'm going to utilize some of those pulling techniques that we practiced in this to kind of get that sunset color bleed, which I'm pretty excited about. So I'll first go ahead and paint in a layer of yellow for my sun. And I'm going to kind of go from there. And I think what I'm going to do now is start mixing some orange. So I'm going to work from that horizon line. So carefully moving across the horizon line. Kind of a rich, rich color down here. And then it almost lightens a little bit before it goes to blue. So I'm going to lay down a little bit more paint keeping the consistency a little bit thicker here because I don't want it to bleed down into the water because I want to have that crisp line, that crisp horizon line. So above the orange, I'm going to go ahead and lay down some yellow and then I'm going to try to pull them into each other. So the yellow is up here. And then with a wet brush and no paint, pull them into each other. So a good amount of water, pulling that together. So that looks pretty good. So I might continue to do that and next move on to <clears throat> that blue. And I think I'm going to mix a little bit of white into my blue as well to make it a little bit more opaque. And so Laying that in here. And I do have clouds kind of sketched in, so I am going to leave some white, some paper white, to keep that clean paper. And then again, with just a wet brush, pulling those into each other. So I'm skipping this area, this little cloud spot. And that's looking pretty good. So I might go back in, blend them a little bit, but pretty happy with that. So I'll continue to work my way up in the sky. I'll get a little bit more deep dark blue up here at, along the top and then pull that paint down. So kind of So this technique obviously works super well for something like a sky. Um, it's fun to use some of these techniques that we practiced um, because they can be really effective. So from there, I'm going to now work my way down, again, kind of revisiting that blue. And I'm actually, I'm going to wait until this orange dries a little bit more because I don't want it to bleed. So I'm going to start filling in, working from the bottom up. So when I get to the horizon line, it will likely be dry again. So finding those shadows in the sand, I'm going to kind of lay down a wash and I think I'm going to revisit it to create some texture. So I'm going to do kind of a flat gradient wash here. 
and then I will come back to it. So I'm going to continue to block in this foreground and then once it's dry, give it a little bit of texture um, so that we can really bring out some of that sandiness and some of that kind of ripply edges as well. So once I've left my first pass with paint dry, I'm going to go back in and start layering some of the colors a bit more. Um, I'll usually do about three to four passes for each watercolor painting. So I'm going to just continue to build up some of that really intense orange that we have here for the sunset. Being careful, I had some pretty good success pulling those colors. So now I'm just kind of deepening them, making them a bit richer. I can pull for a second time with my wet, just water on my brush. And I want to be working around the sun a little bit closer this time. I might switch to a smaller brush here. So working in there. And then I will begin to work in more of the darks. So I have this deep dark shadows on the sand. And so I might on my palette here, start to grab some brown and just add a touch of black to darken that. I could even, if I didn't want to do black, I could even do blue, which will darken that up and then pick up the blues in the water. So let's try that. So working with a little bit less water this time, just to get a bit more crispness in certain areas, create a little bit more texture, having this thicker, more dry brush allows me to achieve that. So I'll need to grab a bigger brush start to work some of these darks in down here as well. So I'll continue to do this. I'm going to also revisit the water, which definitely needs some darkening. So again, mixing the colors I need on my palette, get this really nice deep dark blue. The water is the sun is kind of glistening on the water. So you have these kind of patches of dark spots that I see here in my reference photo. So I'm kind of pulling on those to create some nice sense of depth in the water. And this is where we start to have more fun with our paintings. Watercolor requires that we really take time. We have to be patient between working on different areas, waiting for areas to dry, which can be hard, but definitely worth it because laying that base lighter tone gives me the opportunity to have fun and to add this cool kind of shadowy texture on the water surface. If I didn't lay that down first, it wouldn't look so great. I wouldn't be able to achieve the same effect that I am doing here. So I'm just kind of using the side of my flat brush, um, which is really giving me these nice kind of streaky, a lot of movement. So that's starting to look really good.
I'm gonna keep working here and then I'll let it dry one more time and add some final texture probably on my third pass. All right, time to visit my sunset one last time. And what I'm going to try to do here, and we'll see how it goes, uh, is just kind of carefully drop a few highlights back into this painting. So um, white watercolor is, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Um, but I wanted to just kind of test it out and see if I could get a little bit to come back. Um, sometimes people will use a touch of white acrylic, um, which is okay in moderation, um, but we'll see what we can do here. Just kind of adding a little bit of highlights. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow. See if I can just put a tiny bit of shimmer in here and I want to be careful because it can definitely get muddy it's a tiny bit muddy but I'm kind of I'm trying to lay it on a little bit thick so it doesn't really mix but kind of sits on top so I think the yellow is working pretty well I'm gonna just thicken it up kind of drop it on and I might add a tiny bit of orange as well. Again, kind of work the paint to be a much thicker consistency than we would normally do. So really kind of just trying to lay it on and you kind of need to know when to stop. So I think I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it right there. I don't want it to get too muddy, uh, which can definitely happen if we overwork our watercolors. So the last thing I'll do again, just like with others, is punch up my shadows a tiny bit more. Just one last, one last punch of shadows, making sure that I'm mixing my black with some brown. Don't want it to be too harsh. Grabbing some texture of the paper, just giving it that last little oomph and a very kind of light touch here. We can overwork the paper too, so we wanna be cautious that we don't overwork our paper. We don't want the texture to get too roughed up. So being cautious not to let that happen and it's easy to get kind of carried away and um, overwork it a little bit. So again, knowing when to stop is very important. So once this final touch layer dries, I will absolutely kind of erase. There's not much pencil in this one, but I'll make sure I erase any stray pencils and I'll peel that paper off or pe peel that tape off. 